The CF140 is an ARGB 140mm PWM fan from Deepcool, but is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Before I get into the overview, just have full disclosure, I did buy this fan myself, so all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. So if you do end up liking this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, I'll start off with that quick overview. Now the CF140 is the only 140mm fan listed on Deepcool's website at this time, which is a little weird. But there is also the CF120, which is a very similar fan, but then only 120 millimeters. So the basic specs of the CF140, it has a max rated RPM of 1200, a minimum rated RPM of 500, it has nine blades, it is a hydro bearing, again it is a four pin PWM fan, the LEDs on it are the 5 volt ARGB, now the 5 volt connector is the JSTSM 3 pin, not the standard or more standard 5050 connector. Deepcool gives a one year warranty on this fan, and you do have to buy this fan in a pack of two for around 35 USD. You do also get a little box in the two pack. There is a fan hub, an ARGB hub, an ARGB controller, an ARGB sync cable so you can actually connect it to your motherboard, and two sets of screws. Now before getting into the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear. All this testing is based off of a sample size of one. So this isn't necessarily the exact performance you're gonna get, but it should give you a pretty good understanding of what to expect. Plus, if you do end up appreciating all this testing I do, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Doing so will help me make more videos like this one. A link is in the description. Starting with the PWM range, at 100% PWM, this CF140 has an RPM of 1260-ish. Then when I drop the PWM down to zero, this CF140 has an RPM of around 520. Before moving on to my standardized testing, I'll go over the ARGB LEDs. First, I'll go over how everything gets plugged together. Deepcool went with the JSTSM connectors for both the fan and the ARGB hub. So if you are looking to integrate this ARGB LED hub into with what you currently have, you will need to have the JSTSM connectors as well, or it becomes a massive headache. Or hopefully you have a second ARGB header on your motherboard. So the five volt connector on the fan gets plugged into the ARGB hub. Then the ARGB hub needs to be plugged into the ARGB sync cable which you need to plug in the RGB sync cable to your motherboard. Now, depending on which motherboard you have is which connector you then need to plug into the motherboard. Now, there is also the option of using the included controller. Now, for how the 5 volt RGB LEDs look, I think they look pretty okay. They might be a little dim relative to some of the competition. So if you are in a very bright room, the colors may not quite pop as much but for most people, they should be okay. On to my standardized testing. If you have any questions on how I test the cases, then please check out my fan testing methodology video. There'll be a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. Please note, I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance to the Frost Commander 140 so that I can test 140 and 120 fans on the same cooler so things are a little bit more even there. Okay, starting with the DBA and RPM testing. At 4 volts, the CF140 had a DBA of 32.2 and an RPM of 480. At 6 volts, the sound level went up to 32.4 DBA with an RPM of 700. At 8 volts, the DBA went up to 33.1 with an RPM of 900. At 10 volts, the sound level went up to 33.6 DBA and the RPM went up to 1065. And finally, at 12 volts, the DBA was 35.8 with an RPM of 1235. Okay, for the sound recordings of the CF140 at each voltage, 
but first the ambient room sound for reference. Now onto the airflow testing. I left the DBA numbers up on the chart for your reference. At four volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 108. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 75. And with the cover panel, the FPM was actually zero, which yeah. With no obstructions, it had a pretty decent FPM of 395. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 338. And with the cover panel that dropped quite a bit down to 68 FPM. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. At six volts, it was at 81.5 C. At eight volts, it was at 78.7 C. At 10 volts, it was at 76.3 C. And at 12 volts, it was at 75 C. Okay, I'll be comparing the Deepcool CF140 to the Arctic F12 PWM PST the Arctic F14 PWM PST, and the Fractal Design Silent Series R3 140mm fan. So when comparing the CF140 with these other fans, it has a pretty similar DBA to the other fans when the fans are all voltage equalized. Then when comparing the airflow, the CF140 with no obstructions moves an okay amount of air relative to the Arctic fans. Then with the mesh panel, things don't really change much. The CF140 still moves an okay amount of air at the higher voltages. But in the covered panel testing, all the fans take a really big hit with the fractal design fan almost completely falling off the chart. The F14 and F12 do move a bit more air than the CF140, but I wouldn't really recommend putting any of these fans behind a covered panel. Moving on to the CPU cooler performance, the CF140 manages to match the F12 at 6, 8, 10, and 12 volts. Not to say that that is good, it's more of just an observation. Moving on to the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA, or 12 volts if the fans don't actually get up to 34 dBA. With no obstructions, the CF140 is pretty much in the middle of the chart with an FPM of 335. Then with the mesh panel, the CF140 is again pretty much right in the middle of the chart with an FPM of 288, which isn't bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. But with the covered panel, the CF140 drops to near the bottom of the chart with an FPM of 50. So yeah, you should not be putting this fan behind a covered panel. So what do I think of the Deepcool CF140? It's an okay performing fan that's fairly quiet with some pretty ARGB. They will work pretty well behind a meshed panel, but having them behind a covered panel is a bad idea. Now I do have to say, I do not like that Deepcool went with the JSTSM connector or more so that they don't actually provide a adapter to the 5050 so that you can actually plug standard, the standard 5050 connector should be able to be get plugged into that hub somehow. I looked on Amazon and looked around, finding those connectors is very hard. So if you are looking to add on to what you currently have, that is something you definitely need to look into before buying these fans. Now, this isn't an issue if you go with all Deepcool products because Deepcool does use that JSTSM connector. Now, I do think the JSTSM connector is a better connector over the standard or the more common 5050 connector. But if you are trying to mix things together, it becomes very problematic. So unless you're looking to stay within the Deepcool infrastructure or the Deepcool ecosystem, it is something you have to actually think about. So if you are wanting ARGB fans for your system and you're fine with going all deep cool fans or are able to actually find an adapter and your case has a mesh front and your case can support 14 centimeter fans, 
the CF-140s wouldn't be a bad choice. Now, if your case doesn't have a mesh front, the CF-140s can still be used as a top or rear exhaust. Again, if your case can actually support 14 centimeter fans in those locations. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you get to see all of my charts. A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you are wanting to support the channel directly. A link again is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video right here. It should be along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.